Welcome back to 40 TV with your host, 40. We're going to go ahead and uh, do a little introduction of Final Cut Pro X today. Currently, I have Final Cut Pro X open. Um, so let's begin. If I right click on my main drive right here, Lion, and go to New Event, I can create a new event. I'm going to call it FCP Intro Assets. I'm going to import a file as opposed to importing from camera because I'm doing uh, I'm not using a tape based camera for this particular clip that I'm going to import it's from a Pentax WG-2 uh, point and shoot um, alternatively you do the same thing if you're using uh, for example I own a Canon uh, 7D as well um, if I connected my uh, memory card directly to the computer I would go ahead and uh, do the same exact thing so when I click on import files, it brings up the import dialog box. I currently have it set to my um, to my memory card folder. I'm going to click on the video here. This video is a clip of my dog Bandit. We're going to import that. I'm going to add it to the existing event. Alternatively, I could have created a new event from scratch by selecting here. I'm going to keep these default options and say import. We'll go over the options later in the future. Right now, um, for some of you uh, previous iMovie users, you'll notice that uh, this layout seems a little bit familiar. Um, you can switch into a clip view or back here into um, uh, a list view. If I had multiple files, they would show up here, whether they're audio files, um, animations, uh, video clips, etc. I'm going to go ahead and import uh, this video clip into a new project, but before I do so, I better create a new project. Below, you'll see I have a, my Lion Drive listed here in the project library. If I want to create a new project, all I, all I need to do is click on the plus sign here. When I click on that, it asks me for a name. We'll call this FCP Intro uh, Tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it references the FCP intro assets event. I'll leave the time code at zero. I'll set my video properties based on the first clip that's dragged in. And then my audio and render properties, uh, I'll use the default, which is stereo 48K and ProRes 422. I'll go over what that means in a future video, but right now I'll go ahead and select OK. Automatically it loaded the magnetic timeline associated with that project. If I want to drag this clip in, I don't want to drag the whole thing in. While this clip is selected, it will automatically have an endpoint, but I could alternatively create a different endpoint by dragging the playhead at any point. You'll notice that it's skimming the video. In the right portion of my screen, this is the viewer. The viewer is dynamic. Right now, it's allowing me to skim a playhead on the currently selected clip. If I was in my magnetic timeline, which I will be in a second, the viewer would dynamically change to show what's inside um, the, mag the magnetic timeline. I'll go ahead and uh, create an endpoint by uh, where my play head is right now by pressing I on my keyboard. I'll move a few seconds after, select O on my keyboard to create an out point. I'll go ahead and drag this portion of my clip into the magnetic timeline. It pops up because it wasn't able to recognize this video's clip. I am aware that this is a 1080p HD video. That is the proper resolution. However, the frame rate is actually 30p. So I'll go ahead and make that change and select OK. If I want to show uh, the clip of my timeline for the full length of the current um, zoom level, all I need to do is press Shift Z. It's going to zoom in and uh, fill my magnetic timeline with um, everything that is currently in it. So right now there's just one clip, but if there are multiple clips, Shift Z would show them all. Um, I can turn audio scrubbing on and off by pressing S on my keyboard. Alternatively, it's listed right here. Um, actually, it's Shift S. Regular scrubbing is just S. Um, as you can see, as I move my mouse over the uh, magnetic timeline, you'll see that it's currently scrubbing through the video in the viewer up above. You'll also notice that the dynamic information here um, which includes my uh, time code, my audio meters, as well as my background uh, tasks window, which includes a percentage meter to show you how much 
has been um, rendered, uh, effect-wise, transitions, etc. Um, if you're applying image stabilization, etc., etc. The first thing I'm going to do to this clip is make sure it's selected. I'm going to go up here to the uh, Enhancements menu. Click on the down uh, arrow and select Balance Color. Watch in the viewer when I select this. It automatically uh, picks my white points, sets my white points, sets my black points, and pretty much balances the color of the clip. Um, all in one quick uh, selection. We could go here and say Show Color Board. By selecting the color board, we can make uh, tons of adjustments to the color, the saturation, and the exposure. Really quickly, I'm just going to explain what each button does. You have a global button here. You have uh, shadows, midtones, and highlights. The way the color board works is as you drag one up, you're going to increase that amount of color. Um, as you drag one down, you're going to decrease that amount of color. So if I wanted to take out um, some reds in my highlights, I would drag this button over here and pull it down. You'll notice that that gives my clip a green greenish blue tinge. I'm going to let go and press Apple Z on my keyboard to return it to its default. If I want to go back to the info properties of this clip, all I need to do is click on this back arrow here. You'll notice that currently the video properties are open. If they weren't or if they are not, you can go ahead and click on this I button on the bottom right right here or in the middle right of the interface. This goes ahead and shows and hides the info properties for whatever is currently selected. For me, it's this clip. You'll notice that I can turn on and off the balance color um, effect that we applied by clicking here. Here is also where my transform, my crop, my distortion, stabilization, rolling shutter, and compositing uh, menus are. If I had multiple clips in this timeline, in fact, I can go ahead and duplicate, duplicate this clip by pressing Option on my keyboard, clicking and dragging up. When I let go, now I have a duplicate of this clip on top of itself. It's attached here, and I can zoom in to see that if I move and drag the bottom click, you can, clip, you can see the top one goes with it. That's because clips are attached by anchor points, such as this one. So as I make changes, um, audio effects, for example, if there were footsteps and they were attached to a particular clip, they would move as you move that clip. Just to illustrate what the compositing modes look like, just like Adobe Photoshop, Adobe After Effects, you can go ahead and change your blend mode. So let's say I want to set it to hard light, for example. I can decrease the opacity so that I'm showing a little bit of the layer underneath. Then you can see what a before and after looks like as I drag my playhead before where there is no duplication of the clip and after where there is. I'm going to select the second clip and press delete on my keyboard to get rid of it. So I'll reset my zoom level by pressing shift Z. I'll select this clip again. And why don't we go ahead and apply an effect? If we switch over here, we can see all our video and audio effects. This is the first button listed in this chain of buttons here that allow us to add photos, music, transitions, text, etc. So the first thing that you're going to notice probably is you may not have all of the same effects that I have. Some of these are aftermarket third-party plugin effects. Um, and some can be created from Apple's motion program as well. I'm going to scroll down and select it. Or before I actually select an effect, I can preview what all these effects look like just by running my playhead over one of the effects. You'll notice that as I run my playhead over the effects, it loads extremely fast to give me a preview of what these effects look like. So that's pretty cool. Um, definitely made available due to the fact that uh, Final Cut Pro X is a 64-bit native program now. I'm going to scroll down and look for a uh, effect called, let's see, Film Look. One. I'm going to go ahead and click on it, drag it on top of my clip, and let go. When I do so, the reason I chose this particular one is because I know that this particular one has multiple options. So I just wanted to show you what happens when you load an effect that has multiple options. 
you'll see right now this orange bar that's currently going away. Um, that's actually the background render process happening. You'll also see a percentage right here next to your time code of how much longer it's got left. Now that it's actually rendered, I could go ahead and press my spacebar and it will go ahead and um, uh, play that clip. I'm going to get rid of the audio for this particular clip. I'm wearing headphones so you probably didn't hear it, but just in case, not to detract from the video or the tutorial. If I right click on this clip, I can go ahead and go to detach audio. You'll notice that it pulls the audio from the clip. It magnetically attaches it to the zero point of this clip, which is actually at frame zero. I can select the audio now and press delete on my keyboard to get rid of it. Reselecting this clip, making sure my info pane is uh, open or the inspector is open, um, I can now make adjustments to my film look. If I scroll down, uh, maybe increase the saturation a little bit, increase the value a little bit, maybe bump up the brightness a tad. Um, and maybe drop the contest, contrast the hair as well as the pivot. We can see what a before and after looks like of this effect now by go ahead and clicking on this blue button here. That's with it. That's without. So I'll go ahead and make sure that it's on. I'm going to click and drag a duplicate of this clip to the right. When I click Option on my keyboard and I click with my left mouse button and drag over to the right, I'm purposefully dragging way far away from the first clip just to let you see when I let go of my mouse button, boom, where did it go? I'm going to press Shift Z on my keyboard. Remember that zooms to show all clips in your project. When I show you that, you'll notice that these clips are right next to each other. That's because this timeline is magnetic. It's not going to allow you to create a gap within your clips unless you have the position tool selected. The position tool is located here in the tool menu. If I click on the position tool, I can go ahead and click on the first clip and drag it to the right. You'll notice that when I do this, because I'm using the position tool, it's moving this clip, but it's also trimming the second clip as well as in, in inserting a slug into the beginning of the project. I'm going to press Command Z to undo what I just did. If I switch back to the select tool, you'll notice that this cannot happen. When I click and I drag, I'll only be able to reorder my clips. I'm going to select my second clip. I'm going to trim it down um, from the end actually, just so render times are a little bit quicker. I'm going to select it. I'm going to turn the film look off. And then I'm going to drag a transition in. Transitions uh, are the fourth option here in this menu. I'm going to go ahead and click on the band transition. Click and drag it over the over joining points of these two clips. I'm going to go ahead and select it. Make sure my in inspector is open so that I can make changes to the um, this particular transition. I'll switch it from a horizontal to a vertical direction and then increase my band count. You'll notice as I scrub over the transition, what's happening. So you can see that it's currently rendering. This portion uh, is orange here to show you that that rendering is happening. I'm gonna go ahead and press spacebar. And you'll notice that even though it still hasn't finished rendering, it will go ahead and preview that. It will go ahead and drop frames if necessary to provide the most um, sm the smoothest playback possible. So let's say we're happy with our project. We finished. We've added sound effects, transitions. We've edited our clips. We've dragged in multiple clips. And now we want to go ahead and export. Well, you have several options. If you go up to your menu here, share, uh, you'll notice, uh, wow, you can export to your email. You can export to YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, etc. Um, if you've paid the additional 50 bucks to purchase a compressor from Apple, you can also send this project to compressor and use one, many, uh, one of many of their multiple presets or create your own. Uh, if you do not have compressor, I definitely recommend it. In a future tutorial, I'll go ahead and uh, give you guys uh, an overview of compressor as well as how to set some advanced settings. Right now, actually, that's what I'm going to do is export to compressor and just give you a basic understanding of uh, what's going on here. 
I do upload my videos to YouTube. However, I do not use this YouTube option. I'd like a little bit more control in the process, and you can do that with Compressor. When I select Send to Compressor, it's going to go ahead and launch Compressor. When it launches it, right now I know portions of this screen are cut off. Um, let's see. Well, let me... Let's is it letting me, it's not letting me resize that window. Um, but anyways, right now we have our project loaded here. You'll see it's called FCP Intro Tutorial as we named it in Final Cut. Down here are our, our presets. These are ones that ship with Apple. If I scroll down, um, hopefully you'll be able to see on your screen, there is a folder called Video Sharing uh, Services. If I click on the triangle next to it to open the potential presets, I'll see that I have HD 1080p, HD 720. I typically output my videos for 720. I do have a custom setting below, but I'm going to go ahead and drag, it, drag in Apple's preset. When I drop it onto my project, it will take a second to apply that preset. I could have made changes to the preset. If I had it selected, I could come over here, change the crop, um, uh, the resolution, the frame uh, rate, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we didn't, not for the intensive purposes of this video. Right here is the destination point of this, uh, of the output um, of your file. If I right click where it says source, I can change the destination to my desktop. I currently have a copy of this on my desktop and that's why it's red um, with an explanation point. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. I'm going to delete the word video and click on the explant. Let's see. Actually, I'll just delete the one on my delete the one on my desktop. Click on explanation point. It's gone because there's no longer it no longer is saying, "Hey, I cannot override that file." I could have changed the name as well. I'm going to go ahead and press submit. When I do so, it's going to send this uh, to batch. I could uh, title this if I want, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to say submit. I'll be right back as soon as it finishes compressing, probably a minute or so. All right, and we're back. So yeah, it took about a minute to render. Um, you'll see that it says it's successful here. I'm going to go ahead and close Compressor. I'm not going to save this project right now from Compressor. I'll launch this video just to give you an idea what our final output looks like. I'll open inside a QuickTime player. Let me drag that into view real quick. I'm going to shrink it just a hair. Go ahead and press space on my keyboard to play. You can see Ben, it looks to the right. We got the transition and then he stares at us to say goodbye. <laughs> Probably looking for a treat. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and uh, quit quick time. That was a quick introduction to Final Cut Pro. Hope you guys liked the video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to uh, check out 40tv.com to check other videos, updates. Uh, we're going to be adding all kinds of stuff coming up here in the future. Uh, trying to stay on the ball, stay energized. Hope you guys like what you see. Don't forget to add us on your Facebook page. Comment, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. Till next time, guys. I'm out. Peace.